Welcome to the show, everybody. Joseph Robert, the Fantasy Football Counselor. It is September 3rd, and as you know, guys, the news broke last night. I was on a live Q&A with you guys on YouTube and Insta, and the news broke that Leonard Fournette joins the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, I want to do a specific video right here, right now, specifically on this situation, because I know a lot of people ask me questions. My DM is inundated. What do you do with Leonard Fournette? Do you draft Leonard Fournette? How does that Tampa Bay Buccaneers offense look with Leonard Fournette? How do the wide receivers look? I just want to talk a little bit about the Buccaneers, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and the Leonard Fournette fantasy football impact here, right here, right now. Before I get into that, guys, listen, it is the last draft weekend. Now, a lot of people ask me, what is the 16-round draft solution? Listen, I'm going to give you guys everything you need to crush fantasy football 2020. Now, Typically, traditionally, I should say in a nice way, uh, rankings come out, cheat sheets come out, and these draft kits come out, and it's literally copy and paste rankings. When you go into a draft, whatever platform you're using, you're doing your draft, there is like all these guys you queue. There's a rankings that come out. Those are the rankings that the mainstream are giving you, whether it be magazines, cheat sheets, draft kits. That's outdated. You're already getting that in the draft platform that you're using. So 16 rounds is a game changer. It's like actually having me at the draft with you. It's a video with all my notes of every player to draft in each round, sleepers, breakouts, and I do full mock drafts, multiple full mock drafts, all 15 to 16 rounds there for you guys, Okay. On a silver platter, head on over, to, head on over to thefantasyfootballcounts.com. I've also linked it below here on the YouTube channel. Get it pinned it below here on YouTube, or just head on over to thefantasyfootballcounts.com. You can't miss it; it's all over the site. All right, sixteen round draft solution. You must get it. And again, draft weekend. Let's use this. You're gonna crush the competition. It won't even be fair to them. <laughs> all right, so let's get to it. All right, so let's talk about Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Leonard Fournette now with the Buccaneers. Listen. It's like, I'm a bit of a conspiracy guy. I mean, Tom Brady, he is, <laughs> why is it that like just over what, like less than a year, Tampa Bay Buccaneers went to like a mediocre team now to like a potential all-star team. I mean, they're pretty much loaded here it just in one year. And again, what I think about with the conspiracy is like, you know, if you look at Ray Lewis, he got a Super Bowl before he retired again. Same with Peyton Manning. Now, Brady's probably got, what, one, maybe two, three years max left in them. Now, they, I think they're primed for a Super Bowl this year, maybe even the year after. But if you're looking at this team, I mean, loaded at every position. Now, I want to go on, on record by saying that I don't trust this team for fantasy, but there are some hidden gems here. Like, if you look at Chris Godwin, he could boom. We're going to get to Leonard Fournette in a second. But when you're looking at Chris Godwin and Mike Evans – you got to be paying a second or third round pick. Now, Chris Godwin, typically a 12-person league, is coming off, guys, at the end of the second round. Uh, that, that's Chris Godwin. Mike Evans coming off early third. So are you willing to invest a second or third round pick, flipping the coin on you know who's going to be the wide receiver one? Because I think it might be Godwin because I think he's going to get more volume. But we don't, we don't really know. So... If you look at statistically, Tom Brady, he actually feeds one wide receiver. We saw it with Edelman last year, about 153 targets. So who is going to be Brady's number one? I'm not going to pay a second or third round pick to find out. Mind you, I think Godwin's could have a really good year. Then you've got one of his favorite targets from the past, Gronkowski coming back. I don't think he's going to finish the season anyway. He never really does. He's got O.J. Howard, Bright, all great targets. So now you've got five targets that are going to potentially be catching the ball. Now you can look at the running back situation. Let's talk about Leonard Fournette. Prior to the situation, even when Leonard Fournette and LaShawn McCoy is there now too, what a pest he's going to be. Even before LaShawn McCoy and Leonard Fournette were there, I wasn't looking at Ronald Jones. Why? Because Keyshawn Vaughn was there. So I was concerned Keyshawn Vaughn and Ronald Jones were going to be splitting carries. Now you've got LaShawn McCoy there, right? Now you've got Leonard Fournette. And they also have that guy, Dear Agunbowali. I can't even pronounce it, right? So when I look at this team offensively, the only person I really like for a fantasy perspective is Tom Brady because he's got a ton of great targets to throw to. So if you look at Tom Brady also statistically, you look at last year, I think it was James White had about 95 targets. So James White was getting volume. Then Rex Burkett came in. Then they bring in that Devlin James, you know, that the fullback. He's retired now, James Devlin, whatever the hell his name was. Anyway, bottom line is this, and Sony Michelle, all these guys, like, I stayed away from the Patriots running back for good reason. And then you'd see it, you know, last year or the year before, people get pissed off. Why isn't Sony Michelle getting the volume? Why isn't James White? 
because that's just how they run the system. Now, with Brady there, he likes pass catching running backs, so he's got that Ronald Jones and Leonard Fournette. But again, with Leonard Fournette there, I Ronald Jones apparently was impressing in camp. His pass catching ability has gotten better. He was actually doing better. This guy really worked hard to get the RB1, you know, position. Now, even still with that position, with Leonard Fournette not there, I was turned off because if they really believed in Ronald Jones, they would never acquire LaShawn McCoy. And I thought, you know, that's it. I'm just going to stay away completely. I'm not even going to get him as a late round guy. When it was just Ronald Jones and Keyshawn Vaughn, I, I was kind of in the back of my thinking, maybe Ronald Jones might have this huge breakout season, right? Because he was a second round pick for the Buccaneers a couple years ago, right? So I was thinking in the back of my mind, maybe, maybe there's a shot that Ronald Jones has a couple breakout runs, takes off, becomes Brady's primary target. They run, they ride off into the sunset and we've got this amazing situation. But that's not the case, guys. Look, Leonard Fournette comes in. Leonard Fournette's a workhorse running back. He's easily a top 12 running back in the game. And that's why the Buccaneers got him is because they wanted a guy they can trust. They wanted to kind of like a, I wouldn't say he's like an ultra superstar. I wouldn't say he's like a Zeke, but I think he's like a tier below Zeke. You know, I would, if he's healthy, right? The talent is there. The speed is there. The pass catching ability is there. All of the elements to make him an amazing superstar running back are there and that's what the Buccaneers wanted they wanted a guy that they can believe in a guy that can work around the red zone a guy that can plug the ball in you know a power back a guy that can catch the ball in the backfield they saw the opportunity that's why they signed him to a year because they can get that value get Tom Brady another ring and move on with their lives literally I mean again it's just really really unfortunate when you look at a guy like Ronald Jones who could have had an opportunity and it's such a shame because He's such a young guy, and he wanted to get... I mean, Leonard Fournette's not old either, but it was an opportunity for Ronald Jones to really run with it now that they shipped off that annoying Peyton Barber. And I was really annoying because Ronald Jones never had that opportunity because Peyton, they just keep running Peyton Barber, and he sucked. He couldn't do anything. It was like the worst thing to watch, you know, because you had that possible explosive ability of Ronald Jones that we saw in college, and we never really saw that develop fully. And I always thought that this year maybe it could have, but then it's like, why would you get Keyshawn Vaughn? And that's what turned me off Ronald Jones. And then you add LaShawn McCoy. And I'm like, that's the deal breaker. And now you stack Leonard Fournette. So what is Leonard Fournette's fantasy football value? Do you draft him? What do you do, you know, based on situation? Personally, here are my thoughts. Okay, I'm going to think out loud here and tell you my thoughts. So Leonard Fournette, I'm going to say don't draft him. Now, if you already have him, a lot of people did their drafts thinking he's going to be a workhorse running back, including myself. Now, I didn't end up drafting him, but... I thought to myself he'd be a workhorse running back. So I was looking at him in and around round three to four. Mind you, I was getting David Johnson over him every single time in rounds three to four anyway. But when you look at Leonard Fournette, I mean, the talent is there. Again, the ability is there. The offense could be high octane. It all is predicated on how much volume he's going to get. So with Ronald Jones there, I don't think Ronald Jones is going to be a massive threat, but I think there should be some respect given to him, being that he was the original guy there. I would imagine LaShawn McCoy might get some work. I don't know how much because he's hard to trust, but being the veteran that he is, he is going to probably demand the ball a little bit. So maybe in special plays, maybe in plays they need to trust some guy to to move the ball up the field. But again, he did have some fumbling issues with McCoy. McCoy did last year with the Chiefs, you know, it's going to be tough. Can Keyshawn Vaughn come out and shine, maybe get a couple of breakout runs and become more of a factor? At the end of the day, Leonard Fournette's going to be the one, two, first and second down, I believe. Now, again, a solid flex play, but there is a situation where you got to look back at Tom Brady's history. Can it be a Patriots type backfield? I think very possible with a little more bulk volume to Leonard Fournette. Then you've got Leonard Fournette with his injury history in the past, pulled hamstrings. That's a bit of an annoying, annoying thing that we've seen with him in the past. And you've got all these other targets to throw to. Gronkowski, you know, in the end zone there. Chris Godwin's a good end zone target. Evans. So there is some other options there for Brate Howard. They're good red zone targets as well. So when you look at the entire picture and you look at Leonard Fournette, now if you have Leonard Fournette already and you draft him, I would say just keep him. You know, maybe he has a breakout game. Dump him off. People are going to think he's going to be a full workhorse running back. I don't see that here with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers offense. I think they spread the ball around. I think that Ronald Jones gets involved a little bit in the passing game. I think LaShawn McCoy comes in once in a while. But again, Leonard Fournette is going to be the workhorse there. Personally, again, on the suspect offense, it's a new offense, new situation, a lot of targets, uh, a big committee. 
and Leonard Fournette's going to an entirely new offense. While I do see the upside, I do see the out talent of Leonard Fournette, I do see a potential ceiling. I also see more red flags that tell me I'm just going to stay away. Now, his ADP, I haven't done enough mock drafts after the situation, but I was doing mock drafts when he was a free agent, and I'm assuming he's going to stay in and around that same area. Now, some people may overvalue him. Some people may undervalue him. Now, I personally think he's going to be going around in and around the fourth round. I could be wrong, maybe higher, maybe a little bit lower, but I'm not investing that third to fifth round pick on Leonard Fournette this season. I just think there's more security, more volume, more upside in certain running backs. I'd rather have the upside of Jonathan Taylor going in there with Marlon Mack because he's young, dynamic, high ceiling, great O-line instead of getting Leonard Fournette who's stacked in a situation with Tom Brady who definitely likes to spread the ball around not only to receivers but to running backs. So Leonard Fournette for me you know, even if he finishes top five, which he could, top five, top 10, I think it's a bit of a long shot, but if he does, I'm okay with a safe and healthy pass on Leonard Fournette for the season. I think it's a disaster with the Buccaneers, and I think the Buccaneers, similar to the Chiefs and other teams, really don't care about your fantasy team more than anybody else because they don't have a full workhorse running back that they truly believe in. Leonard Fournette could be that guy, but I'm not taking the risk. There you have it, guys. Leonard Fournette analyzed, broken down for you and his fantasy football value on the Buccaneers. Again, I'm excited about the season, excited about everything that's going on, but this, not something that's getting me out of my bed and going, yay, I'm excited. I got a draft letter for that. Not going to happen, okay? So, Make sure you guys smash the thumbs up. Leave your fantasy questions below. And there you have it. Leonard Fournette to the Buccaneers and the Fantasy Impact. Thank you guys for being here. I appreciate you. We'll talk soon.